Our next panel is going to introduce the International Motion Art Awards winner's screening. And up on this panel, we have David Schoenauer back and Gail K. Baker and Jonathan Rosen will be joining us. And I should mention, which I haven't, is that everything you've seen today, image-wise, in any show is certainly available on our website, ai-ap.com. So if you want to see more of anything you've seen, you know where to go. Ah, there's Jonathan. Sorry. We... No rush. No rush. This way. Just come to me. <laughs> Just be careful making your way. David, can I let you make introductions? Yeah. Um, the, uh, I think one of the things I wanted to point out was that, um, and Mark has made this point before, that one of the interesting things about the Motion Art Awards is the range of the work that we, we get to see. Uh, and I think that's part of the, the DNA of coming from both American photography and American illustration. Um, you know, we see everything from documentary and live action to uh, motion design and motion illustration and animation. So um, today we've got a couple of the winners from this year's uh, contest who sort of their work exemplifies those those other, um, the more of the uh, conceptual motion design and animation areas. Um, we have Gail Baker, who is an artist, illustrator, creative director, and producer who has partnered with uh, animators to bring her paintings to life for a range of clients. Uh, she also teaches an online fashion drawing course for the Academy of Art University. In addition to her freelance illustration work, Gail is currently working on a few personal projects, including a multimedia piece called Finding Beauty that will include just about everything, film, animation, actors, and live music, uh, and a project about rescue dogs and the stories of how their owners found them. Jonathan is a painter, illustrator, animator, and faculty member of the MFA Visual Narrative and uh, Illustration Cartooning Departments at the School of Visual Arts. Uh, the merging of humans and machines permeates his work. His books, uh, Intestinal Fortitude and the Birth of Machine Consciousness, are in the permanent collection of the New York Metropolitan Museum. He was also responsible for the Ichabod Crane drawings in Tim Burton's film Sleepy Hollow. His clients include the New York Times, Rolling Stone, Time, and MIT Press. And I think we want to start with um, looking at some work. Sure. That sounds good. Yeah. Sure. We have a piece, uh, one piece by Gail and one piece by Jonathan.
Okay, great. Let's take it back for a, uh, a short discussion. Yeah. Great. Um, why don't we start with Gail. Uh, Gail, tell us about what we just saw, that, that piece. Um, that was for a dancewear company that I've done work for before. I've done um, covers of their catalogs. And some of the other uh, people were talking about building relationships. And I've found that that is how I've gotten to do some uh, more um, more and more projects with building relationships with a client, like in this one, doing their covers for a couple of years. And then they said, you know, we're thinking about doing an animation. Do you have, you know, what do you think? And um, I had, you know, in talking about the use of social media, it can be a terrible rabbit hole, but I've also found some amazing things on it. Like, for example, I saw an animation that another illustrator had posted. I contacted the Italian um, company that did the animation and introduced myself to them and established a relationship with them. And then when I was ready, I actually worked with them. It was probably six months later. So you kind of never know what you're going to see um, or what you're going to find. But um, this ballet project was uh, totally scripted. And I basically um, kind of brought my own ideas to it, but it was pretty tightly scripted and, you know, 30 seconds just for a holiday greeting. And it was used for a couple weeks in December, and that's it. It's over. Well, what is it like? I mean, you're, so you're, you're working as an illustrator and then working with the animators to, yeah. to do What is that process like? Well, this was the first time I'd worked with an animator who actually did this kind of Disney-style animation. The other animations I've done have been more kind of funky, um, uh, I, I don't know how to describe it, but not as smooth as this. And so um, he, was, he was really, it was a really different experience. And also working with the Italian company, I couldn't ask them many questions because we had language barrier. So with him, it was kind of one of the first times where I could really ask a million questions and say, you know, how can we do this or how can we do that? And he's also a painter. So he would have done more than I wanted him to, actually. Like in the dance sequence, he said, you can give me two drawings and I can fill in the rest. And I was like, I don't think so. You know, like I want them to be my paintings. Mm -hmm. And so it was kind of a give and take of what he could do. And, but then like the waking up, part, I'm not a cartoonist, you know, so I don't know how to draw expressions really well. And he was awesome at giving me, at helping me, kind of giving me rough sketches so that I could follow his sketches to make her wake up. So that was super helpful. Well, how many illustrations did you do for that all together? God. Seven, 70, 80? Yeah. yeah. Um, and you're doing more with illustration or with animation now, and, and taking motion. Yeah, this, this new project I have is my is my own project. No, I really haven't done another animation since that one. Really? So it's been about a year, and um, I'm not sure why that is. But <laughs> you know, I love doing it. The budgets are, uh, you know, it's expensive to do animation, right. and um, so no, I'm I'm. I'm wanting to do more of it. Good. Good. Yeah. And Jonathan, what what can you what can you tell us about those those pieces? Okay. Well, I'll tell you. Um, hey, Mark. Thank yeah. you so much for having me here. You're very thank welcome. you, David. Nice to make your acquaintance yeah. finally. Um, like what Gail was saying about relationships, I've known Carl Stone, the composer of the music and the, the videos for about thirty years. And actually, he when I was growing up in Los Angeles, he was. He was a music director and DJ at the station KPFK, and so I learned everything that I know about avant-garde music, experimental classical from Carl Stone. So um, we have kept in touch for a long time, and um, 
we finally decided to do a performance together because I've been taking my animation and doing, taking out, working with musicians, doing live performance, live video mixing using a program called VDMX. And so at any given moment, I can have three or 400 loops available to play. And um, so uh, it's, it's an addiction that I have to play with musicians. And um, it's like being a visual part of the rhythm section. So we did this performance last year at the Spectacle Theater in Brooklyn. And these were two cuts from Carl. And so I did two completely different kinds of treatments, mm. basically. But it was a kind of a reduction of the sort of performance work that I do, teaser. Right. Um, and what's the, what's the process behind them, I mean, in terms of creating them? Wow, how much time do we have? I know, I mean. I uh, well, a lot, see, um, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a very obsessive artist, and so I'm, I get possessed by visions that I want to see realized, and so I'm, I'm always working on animation for myself. And so I have an enormous stock library, mm -hmm. you could put it. And then, and then uh, so some of it was taken from my stock, and then some of it was done just in response to the music. And it's a, it's a cross between live action, animation, After Effects, Final Cut Pro, um, uh, pixelation animation using Dragon Frame or using After Effects. Um, it's, a, it's a, you know, the kitchen sink, basically. Yeah. yeah. Where that answers the question. It, as much as we probably can. <laughs> um, where is, um, for, for your type of work, where is, uh, is animation kind of, you think, becoming a more important future for illustration? Um, do you, do I do. I think that because um, so many people are, so many um, uh, companies are advertising online to have little animated shorts, it just seems like um, everybody's going to need them. Yeah. You know, so I, I think that there's, there's a really good future in it. Yeah. I know if I really want, you know, I should, I, if I was, I'm not. I'm really not technically inclined, so I really can't imagine myself learning to do the, all the animation. But that would be the smart thing: is mm -hmm. to be able to do all of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, yourself. You should try it. I know. I should try it. Okay. Maybe you can show me. <laughs> and how about what do you think um, in terms of going forward? Future placement. Yeah. Animation. Yeah. Getting paid. Yeah. Um, well, we all want to get paid. Um, for me, it's, it's kind of an evolutionary outgrowth of doing commercial art. Whereas when I make all these animations for myself and put them on my website, oftentimes those have led to jobs and sometimes actually been placed as jobs. I did something for the Times science section, a whole section on sleep, and they picked me because they liked this one video that I did. Um, that was a little bit nightmarish. And so um, I actually, for that, I did seven articles in, uh, in that section. And one of them on nightmares, we actually extracted frames out of it and put that clip on the New York Times. And then through making, I did a kind of a mashup between drawing and photography. Through doing the photography, I created yet another clip just for the New York Times, just for that section. But and that's just one example. It's. Uh, you know, monetizing, it's, it's kind of a slippery thing. It's, it, it's great when it can happen, but I'm, I'm just not, not waiting for a job in order to make the animation. But it, it, it does seem to be a lure that does attract clients to me, whether it's for static or motion work is a good thing. Mm -hmm. So um, it's just a good thing for me to keep doing all the time. And, and in terms of jobs, I, I have done a lot with performance. I just did. I'm sorry I brought this, but uh, okay. um, I couldn't. I couldn't resist. <laughs> uh, in this book that I just finished, um, the um, Fantasia of Color in Early Cinema, I have an animation in the book, which is on the edge of the book. Which is because I designed the book. I also pitched putting an animation in it because it felt. I felt like for a book about film, it, it should have a flip book in it. Um, and then also, um, it's a book about um, hand-colored 
early cinema, yeah. and um, for for the there was a conference for the book, and they invited me to do a VJ performance for the book, and I said, well, how about if I just you give give me the best the best special effects sections from all of these movies? They're like 1896 to 19. 16, and they, they let me cherry pick all these amazing hand colored early cinema and I made a big mashup for that which became a music video for the musicians that came and performed. So it's hard to say where it's going to go, where it's going to be placed, but just to be um, actively doing it seems to attract more work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, does anybody have any questions that you want to talk about? Okay. Well, when I made those teasers, I was absolutely interpreting the music. Yeah. And um, in a way, it's, it's um, very much visual music. So the music is telling me what it wants to be. Um, it's funny with musicians because when I've performed with musicians, they don't want to look at the visuals. They don't want to treat the visuals as a score, which is curious. So I end up I end up being, and, and gladly being a part of the rhythm section, which I, I don't mind. I would like it to be the other way around so that the musicians would just spontaneously do something for my visuals, maybe for like in a bit of a sadistic point of view, I'd like that to happen. But um, yeah, musicians, they, they find it distracting to treat it as a score, so I have to find those musicians that want, want to use the visuals as a score. I know they're out there. Exactly. Those yeah, are the people. Right. Yeah, I know. Uh, when I did this big mashup of all these silent film films, they hired a string trio in, in Amsterdam, and and so they they scored it to my videos with a bunch of leeway, and and they were fantastic. So yeah, some people are predisposed, but it's a it's it's a very fun, addicting thing to do. I recommend it. David, let's take one more question from the audience. <clears throat> it just a bit depends on your taste. I would say if you want it to look analog and, and you like um, manipulating things in front of the camera or um, doing charcoal or paper dolls or clay or anything like that, I would say drag and frame is the way to go because you just you set up your camera and the computer and you have this outboard controller thing and you don't even have to touch the computer, you just press the keypad and, and you get instant gratification from seeing the animation happen in real time. You can do motion paths. If you're, if, you're much, if you're technically inclined and you're really comfortable with Photoshop and Adobe stuff, I would say After Effects, but probably if you, if you really want to be a monster, both of those things at the same time, that's my, that's my advice. I'm sticking to it. Any other questions? Okay, that's it. Well, I hate to cut you off. I've been cutting everyone off all day long, but um, we must move on. But thank you so much, Gail. Thank you. Jonathan, thank you so much.